Welcome back. In this session, we'll be looking at the properties of cathode rays. The first property of cathode rays is that they travel along a straight line. They move in a straight line. And this can be shown in that if we put an opaque object along the path of these cathode rays, then that opaque object happens to block all the cathode rays. And on the screen, what we see is a shadow. A shadow is cast of that particular object on the screen. And the object we use is a Maltese cross. A Maltese cross is simply a type of a shape with four quadrants which form a cross. Therefore, if we happen to put such an object which is opaque, then they block totally the cathode rays and they are not able to reach the screen. And on the screen, what we see is the shadow of that particular object. That means that when these uh, cathode rays hit the object, they could not take a different path, but they are totally blocked. Therefore, this shows us that these cathode rays move along a straight line. Remember also, in rectilinear propagation of light, when you block light, then that light uh, makes a shadow to be formed of the object that has blocked that light. The same thing happens to cathode rays. Therefore, cathode rays move along a straight line. The second property of cathode rays is that when they fall on materials that flourish, that is what you call fluorescent materials, then they make such materials to glow. Such materials are going to flourish or to glow. Therefore, cathode rays also cause fluorescence in fluorescent materials. A very good example of fluorescent materials is phosphor, and we say phosphor is zinc sulfide. And we found this is the material that we coat the screen of the cathode ray tube with, so that when the electrons fall on that screen, they get to, that screen gets to glow. The other property of cathode rays is that they possess energy. We have various forms of energy, and we know that electrons have mass. We say that cathodes is simply a stream of fast-moving electrons. They are moving from the cathode to the anode. Therefore, as they move because they have mass, then they possess what we call kinetic kinetic energy and kinetic energy is given by a half the mass of the electrons times the vol the, times the velocity at which the electrons are moving therefore kinetic energy of the cathode rays will be given by a half the mass times the velocity squared. Later, as we shall see in our next topic, that is X-rays, to form X-rays, we stop, we suddenly stop the cathode rays using a metal plate. And by so doing, the energy they possess is converted to heat energy and also to X-rays. And for that reason, they define that cathode rays possess energy, that is kinetic energy. When they are suddenly stopped, they produce heat energy and the X-rays. The property number four of the cathode rays is that these cathode rays are charged. We found that cathode rays are simply electrons that are moving at a very high speed. We know that electrons are negatively charged and therefore also these cathode rays, the stream of fast moving electrons will also be charged and therefore they are negatively charged. And it's for this reason 
that if we pass cathode rays in either an electric or a magnetic field, then they will be deflected. The cathode rays are deflected by both electric field and magnetic field. I'll be showing you how the cathode rays are deflected by these two fields. If we place an electric field along the path of cathode rays, remember the electric field, we have the positive terminal, we have the negative terminal. Because these cathodes are negatively charged, the negative charge is always attracted towards the positive charge. And therefore, remember they are in motion. Therefore, when they get to this field, they won't just turn at a right angle. They still have some momentum and therefore they are gradually deflected upwards. But they are deflected towards the positive terminal. This is a case one where this is the positive plate, this is the negative plate. The cathode rays are deflected towards the positive terminal. Here, if we were to have these cathode rays at this position, when they enter the electric field, then they'll be deflected towards the positive terminal because they are negatively charged. As well, the cathode rays are deflected by a magnetic field. For us to understand how cathode rays are deflected by a magnetic field, there are two things I need to remind you. When you are showing the direction of a magnetic field or current, we use either a dot or a cross. When we use the dot, this is like the tip of an arrow, it means the field is moving towards us. When we use a cross, it means the field is moving away from us. The other thing we need to recall is that in a circuit, when current is flowing, the positive charges move towards the negative charges. The negative charges move towards the positive terminal. I repeat that. In a circuit, the positive charges move towards the negative terminal. The negative charges move towards the positive terminal. So positive charge flow in the opposite direction to the negative charge. But the conventional direction of current, we take it to be that of the positive charge. So we say that the current flows from positive to negative. We can use the Fleming's left-hand rule to get to know the direction to which these cathode rays will be deflected. In the Fleming's left-hand rule, which we call the motor rule, which we studied in the topic, uh, the magnetic effect of a current carrying conductor in book two, we have, when we hold the thumb, the first finger, and the second finger of the left hand with the first finger facing the direction of the magnetic field, the second finger facing the direction of current, then the thumb will face the direction of the force. So with that knowledge, then let's apply it here and see where will these cathode rays be deflected when they enter this magnetic field. This is our magnetic field. And you can see it is being represented by a cross. Therefore, it is moving away from us. These are the cathode, this is, these are the cathode rays. They are entering the magnetic field. We expect they will be deflected. Remember the cathodes are negatively charged. So these cathodes are moving in this direction. Therefore, if we were to denote the direction of current, then it will be in the opposite direction. So where will they be deflected? My left hand. I first open the first finger for the field. Where is the field moving? It is moving away from us. So it is into the board. 
these cathodes are moving in that direction. Therefore, if it was the positive charge, it will move in the opposite direction. Where is the thumb facing? Downwards. Therefore, this cathode rays will be deflected downwards in that direction. Fill into the book. Current, opposite direction to the direction of the cathode rays. Because cathodes are negatively charged, the thumb will show us the direction of deflection. Let's look at the same, but with the field now towards us. These are the cathode rays moving upwards into the field. Where will they be deflected? Where is the field moving? The field is moving towards us or out of the whiteboard. So the field out. Where is this current? If this was current, then it will be moving downwards because it is opposite to the direction of the cathode. So the field out of the board. The current downwards, opposite to the direction of the cathodes. Where is the thumb? To the left. Therefore, these cathodes will be, the cathode will be deflected in that direction. So you can use the Fleming's left hand rule to tell the direction to which the cathode ray will be deflected in a magnetic field. But in an electric field, it will be deflected towards the positive terminal. Those are the properties of the cathode rays. They move in a straight line. When you have an opaque object placed on the path, there will be a shadow formed. They cause fluorescent materials to flourish. They possess energy, kinetic energy. When they are suddenly stopped, they are converted. That energy is converted to heat and x-rays. And finally, they are charged and they are negatively charged. They are deflected towards the positive terminal in an electric field and they are also deflected by the magnetic field. In our next session, we'll be looking at the cathode ray oscilloscope. Thank you.